Stories are how empathy is formed and cultivated. My name is Osadumebi, and every week, I usually tell you a short story written by a Nigerian writer or author. But this is series week, where I tell you stories over the course of two or seven consecutive days. Basically, however long it takes to complete the story. Series week will occur once a quarter, and the stories featured will still be written by Nigerian writers and authors, and will either consist of a sequence of related episodes from one story, or a set of stories linked by a common theme. That's the long and short of it. So without much ado, today's story is by Nebugo Paul, and it's the concluding part of the story titled The Mortuary Attendant. Catch up on parts one and two released over the last couple of days. I felt violated after touching the first dead body. I felt like a stranger. I felt different. DK brought a bottle of beer to my side, placed his hand on my shoulder, and sat in silence with me. Sometimes I was on night duty, and sometimes I was on day duty. But with each day came a different experience. One of my duties was to transport dead bodies from the hospitals to the morgue. With each passing day, I became curious about the lives which the dead people I transported lived and the life that they had left behind. There was one, a woman, who died in a fire incident which her little son mistakenly caused. Her son just stared at me as I carried her body away. I could see in his little eyes grief, hurt, and guilt. I shook my head as I wondered if he was not too young to carry this kind of guilt on his shoulder. I asked myself how he would live with it and if he would ever find peace with the fact that accidents happen all the time. There was another, a man. He died in a car accident. He was hurrying to see his wife in the hospital. She had just given birth to their baby. His wife charged towards us, hair scattered, clothes rumpled, as we carried away his body. She cried at the top of her voice, screaming, Namzi, Namzi, our baby is here, our baby is here, Namzi, Namzi is here. I later learned that the child was their first, a miracle baby. They had been married for ten years. Gladys. How could I forget Gladys? Gladys was shot by a stray bullet a night before her wedding. Emily. Emily was raped to death. Florence. She died of a heart attack at 18. Mide. He got bad results and died by suicide. Jide. Tunji. Kafayat. Alima. All these people. Seeing people die. It does something to you. It changes the way you see life. It shakes your belief, makes you question if there is a God. But at the same time, it makes you want to cling to the hope of a better life, eternity if you may. I no longer cared about making enough money to prove myself to Maria. I no longer cared about her mother's opinion. I ate and drank with DK and his friends. I saved money too. But I acted like each day was my last. I was kinder. I asked more questions. And I put a little bit of myself into everything I did. The boys and I would joke and laugh as we did our daily work. Distracting each other from the obvious. Some days were easier than others. For instance, 
the days when people came back to life. Oh yes, I witnessed days like that. Some people called it a miracle. Some said the person did not really die. A phenomenon the boys would on occasion debate till dusk. For me, all I had were questions. Questions for the one who resurrected and questions for the one who restored him. Questions about grief and something around wonder. I don't know. I don't know. I will not say that I love my work. I mean, it's hard work and it drains me. But I will not say I hate my job either. It is my source of income and it has changed me. I no longer want to gather and gather. I no longer envy those who gather and gather too. I just want to live well and leave people behind with gentle memories which will fill the void which my demise will cause. And as for love, <laughs> each time anyone comes close, I tell her that I'm not someone she wants to be with forever. Amara, the only female friend I've made in this wild city thinks I'm crazy. She thinks I'm too hard on myself. Meanwhile, TK thinks that I will end up with Amara. But I think no one knows these things really. Life is never always black and white. This is one thing life is teaching me, even as it humbles and changes me. Nebu Gopal is a writer who resides in Lagos. She is a writer by profession and is the author of the book, A Forever Song. You can read more of her work on Medium and connect with her on Instagram at nebulgo underscore and on X, formerly Twitter, at nebulgo. Details and links will be in the episode description. If you've got a story you would like to be featured on this podcast or a published book you want to make into an audiobook, Send an email to info at osadumebi.com or send me a message at osadumebi on either Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn or X, formerly Twitter. I look forward to collaborating with you. And if you've enjoyed this week's episode, please subscribe, leave a review and tell a friend that stories are a good escape for a few minutes each week.